the indiv individual is increasingly disaffiliated, free from the state, and thus of political consideration, free of the family, free of the church. Like a free electron, he is completely disaffiliated. People are gradually coming together on the basis of a community of interest. And we can see on our new website, Citizen Voices, as I said, citizens are developing networks and stimulating debate about very specific themes, youth, women, culture, the environment. We are barely beginning to measure the impact of these major changes on civil society, political life, and culture. In these circumstances, then, how do we rethink the relationship between art, culture, and society? New professional quality tools are enabling citizens to progress from being mere consumers to being creators. Even the expression, you know, pro-ham, meaning professional and amateur, has been used. The new technologies enable them to produce perfectly usable and diffusible digital content whose image, sound, graphic, video, and text quality rivals the production quality that is, in the past, was achieved only by the mass media. Thus, the new technologies and the new platforms are having a real impact on production and dissemination processes that used to be the exclusive preserve of mass media. Last November, in Rideau Hall, we held the initial gatherings under the title Art Matters that are part of a broader reflection on the status and future of creativity in Canada. The first meeting was devoted to audiovisual media and new technologies. For example, the group homelessnation.org, which is made up of homeless people, came to talk to us about the videos they produce themselves and post on the internet, thereby creating thousands of first-person short films. Through new technologies and with very modest resources, people of, of no fixed address and no voice now have their own space and a way of speaking out. In the information society, economies of scale are becoming less certain, shaken out of their autocratic and monopolistic status by new technologies. Today, digital content can be reproduced at nominal cost and disseminated instantly worldwide. If we believe what Joël de Rosnay says in a book called La Révolte du Proletariat, or The Revolt of the Dictated Two, it is the actual process of creation that is being altered by new technologies and the intellectual behavior they generate. He believes that collaborative or interactive creation relies on networks of collective intelligence and no longer on pyramidal human organization. We are therefore going to see and are already seeing a clash between those who possess the means of producing and disseminating information and those who were once thought to be permanent members of a captive audience of viewers and readers who were regarded as passive users. The portable culture of iPods, IPTV, ITV, and Mobisod is revolutionizing the way we receive and enjoy music, movie, and so on. Portable media are not just wireless, they are also disconnected from time and space. Spectators are no longer captives of movie theaters or their living rooms. They can watch what they want, wherever and whenever they want to. In other words, times have changed. The relationship between the creator, his or her work, and the spectator is undergoing radical alteration. So 
Is the internet the medium of democracy? Is it a cultural tool that is vital to renewal of the relationship between the citizen, the city, and the society? In the society? Perhaps. It is promising, and Utopia is working for the time being. However, we have to be careful, very careful. The internet revolution and the digital revolution call into question our ways of producing, writing, in, and disseminating. Globally, they challenge our relationship with the image, with images, and with the imaginary, with what is true and what is false, with truth and lie and lies. Where is reality? Where is illusion? Who takes the time to step back and analyze things? Who guarantees the truth and what we see? What, of what we see? Who guarantees the truth of what we see? We see more, it's clear, of course. But do we gain a better understanding? Are we moving towards a world in which the expansion of the virtual will lead us not to open up more to others or to the world, but to turn inward on ourselves, our fears, and our specters? Do the democratization of meaning and enhanced ethic go hand in hand with universal access to the use of the images to express ourselves? to create, to communicate, and to exchange ideas, as much as to challenge, question, and denounce? It is definitely questions of meaning and ethics, rather than mere means, that will generate the social and cultural issues implicit in the new kinds of production that have been made possible by the combined impact of new technologies and new platforms. In order to Avoid the worst outcome, a turning inwards, isolation, and virtual captivity, and make possible the best outcome, improve socialization, participation in democratic life, and contribution to the humanization of humankind, we shall have to invent new ways of bringing together individuals and their energies and talents in new networks of meaning based on new economic models and of alternative funding, because it is essential to maintain the role of direct dialogue and debate as much as room for critical thinking, since there are necessities as vital to the survival, to the survival of democratic societies, as oxygen is to ecosystems, you know. It is from this point of view that my answer to the question, can the artist still play a prominent role in a plugged-in world is yes. I shall explain why. From the appearance of the first cave paintings to today's urban graffiti, I believe that the artist's central mission has been to give meaning to the world that surrounds us. As the philosopher Castoriadis put it, art is a window on chaos, the chaos of the world, the chaos of meaning. 